uh, traction control, can we make the traction control adjustable um, using motion boost controller or by putting an, um, a voltage input to the secondary mat? Yes, it's, it's true. We can uh, use the ratio on boost control and we can put a multiplier on the severity of the traction control. So for a certain amount of wheel slip, we can adjust the ignition time and we can reduce the engine torque to bring the car back in. Obviously different days, different conditions, tires, surfaces, weather conditions, it's all going to change. So we can do several things. I mean using custom mats we can set up um, more aggressive, less aggressive traction control for different modes. But on top of that we could set one up where we use race from boost controller, uh, use the cruise control switch to adjust the severity of the traction control and the way it's working. We could have it more aggressive for greater wheel slip. We could have it that's doing very little for very little tire slip. If it's a, a bad day, if it's very slippy, then uh, we're going to want a lot of torque reduction, a lot of retard, and we can just dial it in using the uh, race one boost controller, using the, the cruise control. Um, We also have, yeah, let me show you in custom maps, um, the input. So we can also use the map sensors now. So if you're running dedicated speed density, so as we said earlier, it does work extremely well now. Um, cannot tell the difference between map and speed density, which is quite unusual. It's, um, it's really working extremely well. And this frees up, obviously, the, the map sensors which is something we've just recently added. So we can now use the math sensor voltage as an input as well. So we know long, longer limited just the input and the secondary air injection math sensor. We can also use the um, bank A and bank B math sensors for an input as well. Um, that combined with the fuel temperature sensor which isn't fitted on the European vehicles and the JDM ones as well, um, we've actually got four inputs we can input into the GTR now. I know one of the dealers is um, is pulling in EGT, um, so I'm quite keen to see how he gets on with that. Um, he's setting it up at the moment to put compensations in for um, uh, EGT, and I believe he's also setting one up for fuel pressure as well. As you can see the inputs here, the X and Y inputs, there's lots of different parameters um, that you can use as inputs. So um, you can really create any map. It's just instances where you think, hmm, I could have a map to do that. The options are there. The output, adding up as integral values, acting directly on torque, um, torque actual, so you can control gear control, um, BBT angle, target boost pressure, you can just influence pretty much every parameter on the car. Somebody just commented on the wrap round boost gauge, that it, uh, the wrap round boost gauge wraps round off the end of the dial back onto the negative side, it can actually be configured with the offsets and uh, subtractions and thresholds um, that it can, when it goes off the end of the gauge, start again from zero and start to build there. With the offsets, with the subtractions and the multipliers, you literally can do whatever you like. We set it up as default to wrap round, but you can set it up however you wish using the, um, the boost gauge multiply offset and subtraction thresholds. It's all there. Um, cruise control actually is a new feature that we've added recently. Um, the Japanese cars tend to have a cruise control limiter where you can't set cruise control over something quite low, about 60 kilometers an hour. Whereas the European cars you can see here is 200 kilometers an hour. So this is the maximum speed you can set, 200 kilometers an hour. And I think this one is the 
this is the maximum allowed. So you can set it at 200, you increase it, but you cannot set it over 260. And the JDM card is quite low, at about 70 or something, and you can go up from there. Um, you can just increase it as you needed. Fan control, um, recently added, uh, defined. Fan control, almost like idle control, never particularly easy, complex, lots of different conditions that they will be used. But the main basic fan controls map of the 3D radiated fan control map one here and the temperature thresholds which control the fan duty in the 3D map. Let's take that one out. Say changes. Bad fan says so the coolant temperature thresholds in Celsius as it passes the threshold will step up the duty map with a different fan duty. There's also um, fan duty if we add the help in here. We define which of the which of the columns deciding which fan duty map is chosen. There's four different radiator fan maps. Fan map is one is the one default use. There's others for uh, different conditions which are going to be um, probably AC related, low vehicle speed um, when there's um, saturation possibly and they need to dissipate the heat from the condenser from the uh, AC fan uh, from the AC heat exchanger so they'll switch to different modes to kind of purge and dissipate the heat out of the aircon system. The majority of the time the driving is going to be using uh, red fan one with the thresholds which are shown here. That name we've recovered, the special features as we said earlier. Um, use race from boost control lane custom maps as an input. Um, map switching on the rev counter, the TACO, you need the TCM flash, the latest race one feature file on a tech update. Not flashing, not enabled by default. Math sensor swap is something we covered previously. Uh, some intercoolers on the market, in particular I think it's the Forge one, it swaps the banks. Um, bank one goes into bank two. And if you swap that, then the engine ECU is looking at the wrong throttle the wrong mass airflow sensor for the AF sensor for the uh, wideband in the exhaust. So it's important that if you have got an intercooler fitted that swaps the math banks over that you check this box so that we swap them over in the software so they work properly. And launch controls discussed, idle speed, three target idle speed maps. Um, as can be seen here, as discussed earlier, we've got lots of, we did a lot of work on the factory ignition time, and there's lots of different maps for different uh, conditions, engine cold, engine hot, in safe mode, not in safe mode, um, time in mode B, which is the dynamic advance. Typical Nissan, make it as complicated as you can. It's a privilege to be able to say that the new race one ignition map is just far superior. What you see in the map is exactly what you get and on the Gen 2 the dynamic advance is still active. It's um, just effortless, just works so well every time. So as I say we'll be moving these maps out of the software. Uh, we'll put them in another category so if you use another one racer feature file that you can still access them but you should just base all your tuning on the latest race one feature file, phase three version 12738, it is far superior, using the latest TCM um, gearbox software, um, launch control, um, LC versions 4, 5 and the 38B uh, version that's in the 2013 models, our car has never driven so well, so using the latest gearbox software, use also on the Gen 1 cars, use the JW series 1 files, they're more suited to the later Gearbox control software. So don't be using the older JC series um, ROM files, move up and JF series, use the latest JW. That's shown in help, featuring license. Uh, 
um, what am I looking for, here we go, so you can see the JW series of 2010 models, you can use these on early, all the early versions, 2008, 2009s, so if you tune in, in one region really, you only need two ROM files, you need the latest Gen 1 for your engine ECU, and Gen 2s, you can use the 38, you can use the 38B, which are shown here. So all the all the KBs and the KJs, you can replace with the 38B, and all the Gen 1, the JF and JC, you can replace with the JW. Um, TCM, as discussed, latest TCM file, um, the KB, so-called LC4, tried and tested, works extremely well, we've been using the KJ for a very long time, and the latest, 2013 is 38B, for a little difference between that and the KJ, next to nothing really, um, but using the latest software in all the cars, Gen 1, Gen 2, as I say, Gen 1's use the JW ECM series. Okay, uh, remember, as I say, to check help files. We're currently updating the GTR TCM, the diagnostic tools, the DTC, the live data um, will all be applicable. It's just the tuning one that's going to uh, be updated with the new maps, etc. So we'll get that done over the next week. Um, so let's go back to our final page. Uh, Uh, one final point worth noting, we've been doing some work on the ECU, there's been, um, uh, we've got some improvements as well in the programming, a few people have had problems during programming or whatever, and we'll be rolling out shortly some improvements just in Pro ECU, keep your Pro ECU up to date, where it will be better in the event of programming failure and ECU recovery. We've already got ECU recovery in the software, and this will also affect the TCM, where um, programming speed and time will be further improved as well. So look forward to that. We're testing that at the moment internally, and that will be coming. Um, that'll be coming in the next week or so. Just making sure everything's working right. 